As part of the continued expansion of content here on Globetrotting, the channel sees a return of airline introductions and overviews, giving you the best well-rounded view of a carrier within the aviation industry. Today sees a shift to Canada, and not with the flag carrier, but with WestJet, an airline with a lot of ambition it hopes to achieve, but definitely faces equal competition in a region that has seen many new carriers emerge continuously in recent years. Where does the airline stand? Where is it thriving? What is the future outlook? And there is so much more to explore. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Actually, over 80% of viewers aren't subscribed, so hitting that button would mean a lot. WestJet launched in 1996 and has since played an integral role as a major Canadian airline, only really ever playing second fiddle to the flag carrier Air Canada. While their Canadian operations have always been present, WestJet over time has grown its international presence, targeting various locations right around the globe. Additionally, through its regional brand, it can feed traffic into quieter cities that still require established connections, whether that be to major cities or transborder services. To understand WestJet in a nutshell, the initial plans for the business model were to follow something similar to the likes of Southwest. But that has obviously changed, as they've evolved and also expanded. Fun fact, the name WestJet came about because of the company's initial focus on the western part of Canada, and offering low-cost fares. WestJet has, as I briefly touched on only 30 seconds ago, drastically changed through the years to better align with key targets laid out by executives at the company. Notably, in the late 2010s, the low-cost element was removed as the company launched Swoop, soon to be reintegrated. It started the transition for WestJet to becoming a full-service carrier. As for its fleet, well, in all honesty, it hasn't changed all that drastically, aside from notable mentions such as the 767 departing and older 737 variants. The strategy at WestJet has been to stick with Boeing units to propel their mainline operations, which has worked very generally. They are an airline that, if we look ahead into the future, will keep a very simplistic feel to their fleet. Currently, yes, the airline operates the 737NG, but in terms of next generation aircraft, it has the 737 MAX that will be an integral part of its future. While it already flies the 737-8, it awaits the 737-7 and 737-10, which it is worth noting are both the only two variants yet to be certified, but will be equally important for their long-term fleet renewal and expansion. As for their wide-body operations, it's the job of the Boeing 787 to connect WestJet ports to locations right around the globe. There has been a continued ramp up of Dreamliner services through the years, with more destinations now accessible thanks to the capabilities of the jet. All these future aircraft also, it's worth noting, have further options available, meaning if WestJet needs additional capacity, they can achieve this. And looking ahead, their goal is to really only fly two series of aircraft, the 737 MAX and the 787 Dreamliner. What about the route network at WestJet? Per Sirium data, WestJet offered 11,200 flights roughly for July of 2023. This was a 21% rise year on year, equating to 1.83 million seats. Naturally for the carrier, based on flights operated, its Canadian domestic operations definitely reign supreme, with Calgary and Vancouver leading the way. Per month in July, flights tallied 837, which just to give you some perspective, are almost 300 ahead of the following route pairing, which is also in Canada, but it highlights how important the Calgary to Vancouver connection is. Toronto and Calgary is next. The first trans-border connection that we see is Las Vegas and Calgary at 199 flights. Meanwhile, its first destination away from North America is 99 flights per month, the Jamaica to Calgary route. The biggest growers, though, year on year saw Montreal and Vancouver increase 1,450% to 62 flights. This was up from the previous four. At the same time, Vancouver and Halifax also saw a 1,000% growth year on year. Las Vegas and Edmonton was the biggest trans-border grower, seeing a 200% increase to 96 flights in a month. This is all part of WestJet's commitment to once again focus on the western part of Canada, and that especially relates to Edmonton. 
What about the most significant drops? If we're taking a look at the growers, I think it's only fitting to explore maybe the areas that we saw drop-offs in, and that was Halifax and Toronto, which saw a sharp 65.8% drop, while New York, which was LaGuardia and Toronto, saw only 51 flights in a month, which may seem like a lot, but considering that is a 57.9% drop, it does highlight the changes in the network. Looking ahead though, the integration with Swoop and other businesses as WestJet certainly views more consolidation means that they will have to reorganize their root network. For WestJet though, if we're looking ahead, it isn't root expansion, nor would I say is it really a new aircraft that remains arguably their biggest focus. It's as I've touched on a few times in this video, the integration of Swoop, their low-cost brand that was announced a handful of months ago as part of a major reshuffle to the WestJet group. As part of the decision, Swoop will unfortunately cease to exist as a brand and be fully integrated back into the mainline WestJet which means its fleet will come back home. The expectation is this will be completed by the end of October this year. So by the end of next month, the time this video is going live. It is very important to consider that it's not just the aircraft, but the accompanying 32 destinations that Swoop finds itself flying to that WestJet will have to accommodate. How they go about doing this fully remains to be seen. No doubt further details will be revealed at a later date, but WestJet still says that they promise to offer low-cost flights where applicable. Ultimately, WestJet will always be pitted against Air Canada. For it being the second largest carrier, there is only one true airline standing ahead of it. That is, Air Canada. They offer domestic, transborder, and international services, and those international services have definitely only been growing of late with the addition of the 787. However, ultimately, Air Canada does have the upper edge thanks to its scope, but it comes down to what you're really after when you're deciding who you're going to fly with, from product, price point, end destination, and potentially service. Air Canada certainly benefits customers thanks to its increased reach and connectivity. Whereas with WestJet, maybe it's your perfect option if you're looking for a more relaxed and pleasant overall service experience. People will undoubtedly have their preference like they do, and I would love to hear your thoughts below in the comments. If you're booking a flight, say, whether it's within Canada or a transborder service, are you opting for WestJet? or Air Canada, or maybe it's Flair. Talk to me in the comments, and also, what are your thoughts on WestJet as a carrier? Are you excited for their future? Are there specific routes you'd like to see them starting up in the future? Thank you very much for tuning into this video. If you'd like to see more of these airline overview, no doubt I have no shortage of airlines that I can cover. Let me know below, and thank you very much for your continued support right here on the channel. It really means a lot, and I'm glad to see that you're enjoying the content. Take care, and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.